The Browns have had an interesting history when it comes to general manager um, throughout their 20 years that they have been back in NFL. Well, now 21 years that they have been back in NFL. A lot, and I mean a lot, of incompetence is packed into those 20 years. So what I wanted to do is do a tier list, just like I did for the head coaches, for the general managers. Um, and we're going to get into that. But before I do, I want to make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding that notification bell so you can get notified when I upload. Going to have a ton of live streams this year. Going to have a ton of just regular content this year. A good amount of content just coming at you. So if you want to be here for it, if you want to make sure you're notified when that content drops, be subscribed, be notified. But also, I want to give a shout out to the Patreon.com dog check tier members. I'm going to start with Michael Matique, Michael Morales, Mark Kahn, Max Haymaker, Drake, Nick Merrick, Mike Labra, Wes and Megan, DA, and Jay. Greg Ehlers, Austin Bolin, Easley Bash, Joe Hart, Gabriel Wilson, Fred Pratt III, David Valtiar, Relentless Buck, Chunt, Rex Kaufman, Kevin Johnston, Cleveland Cart, Matt H., Sign Sheets, Gemini, Lee. Freeman, Freeman, Fight Dirty 74, Yo Yo, Matt Lloyd, Paul Wilcox, Hundo Magnifico, Kyle Stouffer, Lukey from Munich, Deveroff, J Guy 101, Musty Taco, Joe Bobby, Brad Cowboy, Dylan W, James McGinley, Arendal, Chad, Gimme, David Malinato, Dylan Hill, Josh Bendor, Jalil Salim Jr., Mark M., Stuart Moore, Cleveland BCI, Robert Jermaine Jr., Dave Mike May, Andrew Hirsch, Curtis Bear, Batman, Barack Kumar, John Albert, Beerman 069, Masayua, Buzz Roland, James Nemo, Mac House, Reeve Hertz, Philip Wilcox, and Marie Rivert, Sean Barron, Gagos Pisano, Corporal Nick Lopez, Dom Gazzola, Nick Nasty, Ian Whitaker. Colin 26, Christian, Dave Strong, Michael Stone, Billy Moose Gentry, Austin Z, Mark Burnett II, Andre Griffin, Otis Wolf, Dog Pound, Kai, Lydia, Jesus Serrano, Alexander Davis, Chris Phones, Picktown Browns backer, Max Nilakenko, Mark Khan, Max Aldojo, and Water Bear Marketing. Again, guys, thank you so much for your support over the offseason. It means a ton to me. Now, now let's talk about these general managers. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to jump right into it, and I'm going to start with the F tier. And the F tier and the only general manager um, in new Cleveland Browns history to, to be F tier is Ray Farmer. This dude just was awful. And I'm not going to lie, a huge part of what's going to put him in F tier, I don't care what else he did throughout his general manager run, is that god-awful 2014 first round. You have one of the best drafts of all time. If you go back and look at how many players in that first round made a Pro Bowl or an all-NFL team or a future Hall of Famers. I mean, we're talking about Khalil Mack. We're talking about Aaron Donald. We're talking about Odell Beckham. We're talking about a plethora of excellent football players available in that draft. And in the first round, nonetheless, you might have drafted two of the worst players in that entire draft in Johnny Manziel and Justin Gilbert. Now, that's bad enough on its own. What makes that even worse is that you had the fourth pick, right? You had the fourth pick of that draft, which could have got you Khalil Mack. You traded back to the eighth pick. And instead of going for like an Aaron Donald or something like that, or, or you know, one of the great wide receivers that went in that draft, you take Justin Gilbert, who, you know, quiet as kept, might be a bigger bust than Johnny Manziel, because you can argue that Johnny Manziel helped you win a game. Justin Gilbert has never done something like that. And, you know, he was off the team within like a year and a half. So that's just inexcusable how, how bad those drafts were and i think those drafts given the assets that they had and the quality of those drafts it's just catastrophic to this team and this team's future right if you had a better gm in 2014 and 2015 you probably would have never had to go to the point to where the browns had to where they had to go 0 and 16 and really just explode this thing and strip and strip it for parts because i don't think you would be in that desperate of a situation because you might have gotten some really good talent given that you had a tremendous amount of assets in one of the best drafts in recent history but somehow found a way which is actually kind of difficult um, to draft two of the worst players in the entire draft in the first round, an historically good first round. So 
Yeah, that's why Ray Farmer is going to get. He is somebody who I do think is responsible for why the Browns had to go as low as they did in the next few years after he was fired because he had messed up this team to that point. Um, Yeah, Ray Farmer, F tier. There's a reason why he hasn't been hired as a general manager by any other team after his stint with the Browns. He was awful. Um, The D tier. Now we're going to start with a guy, um, Michael Lombardi. Michael Lombardi is on D tier one because his drafts are pretty eh. And also, you know, he's the dude who endorsed Brandon Whedon, that pick uh, in 2012. And then also when he had control of the Browns, he decided to go with Leon McFadden over Tyron Matthew. Yeah, that one didn't age well. Um, Michael Lombardi, just kind of a nothing GM, never really did anything uh, useful for the franchise going forward. That's why he's in D tier. Next guy is Dwight Clark. Not going to lie, I don't know a ton about Dwight Clark, but what I can do is look throughout the history, the drafts while he was here, and just a numerous first-round bust um, throughout that era. And, you know, talentless Browns teams, and that's going to fall on Dwight Clark, unfortunately. Then we got Butch Davis, who's also in D tier. Jeff Garcia, instead of Ben Roethlisberger, is one thing that's going to go on here, right? He decided, he opted as the general manager, he opted to get a free agent quarterback like Jeff Garcia instead of getting one of the young quarterbacks that were going to be available to him, who would be available to him, um, and that was Ben Roethlisberger. So, you know, that's going to be a big miss. And also, you know, the Browns weren't necessarily hitting on their draft picks in 2002 through 2004. So I'm going to feel very comfortable and putting Mr. Butch Davis in D tier. You got George Kokinas, who, look, we don't know how much control ultimately he ever had in the organization or if he ever was a general manager. All I know is that while he was there, he had the most boring roster in football. He had the most talentless roster in football. He had the most expensive roster in football. And he had the oldest roster in football. How do all of those things go together? It's literally difficult to be that terrible at your job. Yeah, well, that's what George Kokinas did. Uh, he was only around for one year. That is what it is. Tom Heckert. Tom Heckert seems like a nice guy. Tom Heckert was kind of, you know, the middleman when Mike Holmgren was here, by the way. How many of you guys have honestly forgot that Mike Holmgren used to be like a vital part of the Cleveland Browns front office, right? I forgot completely. Um, But Tom Heckert was kind of like the middleman for Mike Holmgren because Mike Holmgren never wanted to really do his job. So he kind of got a lot of flack for a lot of bad decisions that really weren't his fault. And he did have some decent picks here and there um, during his time. But what puts him in D tier is that 2012 first round. Uh, Trent Richardson with the third overall pick and Brandon Whedon with the 22nd and uh, there's no way to really uh, no way to really fix that one right especially when he didn't hit on anybody especially special during that time period so unfortunately Tom Heckert he's gonna have to get D tier here now let's move on to C tier we're gonna start it off with Sashi Brown now the elephant in the room whenever you talk about Sashi Brown is the win-loss record it's awful it is a terrible win-loss record um, under Sashi Brown now you can argue that that was kind of designed or by design that that win-loss record was awful, but also it was a terrible win-loss record. And some bad decisions were made during that time period. They severed their relationship with Joe Hayden in a less than amicable fashion. They did the same thing with Mitchell Schwartz. They were not really good at the people in the human relations part uh, of this uh, business when they were in charge here in Cleveland. Again, it never was going to be Sachi Brown long-term, no matter what Sachi or D. Podesta thought it was not going to work out that way just because he was a little bit too callous um, to make that work. But you do have to give Sachi Brown credit for a few things. One, he did set the table in a fantastic way for the next guy. I mean, all those assets, all those ways that he had maneuvered for assets were pretty impressive, right? You talk about the Brock Osweiler thing, right? Getting that second round pick um, just by taking on his contract and eating some dead cap. You know, that was a pretty innovative move there. And you ended up getting Nick Chubb out of that ordeal. Let's also talk about, you know, if you don't lose as much as he did, you don't get Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett, obviously a big part of what the Cleveland Browns are doing right now. So Sachi Brown... It's kind of a mixed bag there, right? Because, yes, the win-loss record was awful. The regime was awful. Some of the decisions were awful. But ultimately, it did take you to a place where you were able to set the table 
to have some of your best years and, and since his franchise has come back in 1999. So kind of puts him at a C tier for me. All right, so Phil Savage is also on C tier. He's here because he drafted Joe Thomas. And Joe Thomas right now is the only guy that you're pegging for the Hall of Fame that the Browns have had since 1999. So, yeah, that, that he gets a lot of credit for going Joe Thomas there. In, in a draft where it would have been easy to do something silly um, and not take the right guy, he took the Hall of Famer. So tons of credit there. Um, but the QB situation and, and not making a more strident decision on Derek Anderson after that 2007 season, right? Either you commit to him or either you trade him. They did neither and they kind of ran out the clock on that, which ended up just with a mediocre team at the end of the day. Um, some good things with Phil. A lot of bad things with Phil, but also the team went 10-6. and six. They were actually built well, had some good drafts before that 10-6 and six year. So I'm going to give Phil a lot of credit for that. I think he's a pretty good C-tier um, GM, at least when you talk about the Cleveland Browns history. And now let's move to B-tier, for the Cleveland Browns at least, and that's going to be John Dorsey. Now... I'm going to sing some of the praises of John Dorsey and why there are still people who defend John Dorsey to this day. There, there are good reasons why people do. Um, the main core of this roster, John Dorsey, essentially, right? It's a lot of that 2018 draft. And that 2018 draft was really, really good uh, for the Cleveland Browns, right? You get Nick Chubb out that 2018 draft from the extra pick that Tachi Brown got you. Um, you get Baker Mayfield. You get Denzel Ward out of that draft. That is three key cornerstone players in one draft. Um, that's enough right there uh, to, to, to kind of give you a ton of credit for, right? That is an excellent draft. He brought in Jarvis Landry, who has been a big part of this team. He also uh, brought in Odell Beckham, who we think is going to be a big part of this team this year. And also, you have to give John Dorsey credit for bringing in Kareem Hunt. That was a really dicey situation when he did it. But fortunately, Kareem hasn't had any real incidents since he's come back to Cleveland. So that's kind of worked out. Um, and, you know, again, like look at what he has brought in. The strength of his offense is his versatility. Um, you got Baker Mayfield. Field. You got Odell and Jarvis. Those are all Dor Dorsey guys. And Chubb and Hunt. Those are Dorsey guys. Now, the offensive line, not Dorsey at all. Like, that had to get rebuilt after he left. But still, a lot of that strength of that offense was brought in by John Dorsey. And this is what we're talking about is the best team that this franchise since 99 has had. So he does get credit for that. Baker Mayfield, he does get a ton of credit for that because there are not a lot of GMs in the NFL that would have taken Baker Mayfield, a lot more GMs would have taken Josh Rosen or Sam Darnold in that spot, but they weren't necessarily talking about Baker Mayfield. They weren't talking about Lamar Jackson. And some of them were talking about Josh Allen, but significantly more people at that time were talking about Sam Darnold going number one overall. He was almost a consensus guy. John Dorsey went against the grain and got Baker Mayfield. And the more Baker Mayfield works out, the better this is going to be for John Dorsey's legacy because that ultimately can be what he's remembered for. Now, the reason he's not a tier and the reason he's not still the Cleveland Browns GM to this day is Freddie Kitchens. He died on this Freddie Kitchens hill, and I don't understand it. Freddie Kitchens more than exhibited enough reasons to why he was not a competent GM, why he was not a competent head coach. And as time has gone on, as more information has gotten out about that year that he was the head coach, the more obvious it is that he should have never been the head coach there. But John believed in him. John went and died on that hill, and that gives you a huge question mark about how he can hire head coaches. Um, but as a talent evaluator, and look, the 2019 draft was not a great draft, but at 2018 draft more than makes up for everything. Um, and you can't deny that a lot of the talent that makes this team offensively, especially the juggernaut that it could be, is from John Dorsey in his era. But that's just my thoughts on all the GMs. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But again, guys, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Have a good night.